evokes Ted from Nerd Immersion here, and as if I didn't already have enough news coverage going on, we got some big news in the way of Adventures League stuff. Now, I know Adventures League's not for everyone, and not everybody gets a chance to play it, but hey, the news we're going to go over today might actually be enough to make you change your mind, and that is the complete destruction and abolishment removal of Player's Handbook Plus One. Now, there's an article, we're going to go through it, but there's the concept of Player's Handbook Plus One was originally introduced for the purposes of balance, and what that meant was when you went to build a character for usage in Adventures League, you were limited to the Player's Handbook and one additional source. This bothered a lot of people because with books like Xanathar's, which would give you a ton of options, you couldn't use a race found in Volos or a race found in Warden Canons or something like that or whatever. There was a bunch of funky, weird ways you could backdoor in through DM rewards and certificates and all this other kind of stuff. But uh, that has pretty much been abolished, it seems like, with this new article we see today, which says, saying goodbye to the PH plus one rule. Big changes are coming to Adventures League rule sets, beginning with the Masters and Historic Campaign documents releasing over the next week. Character creation and development will no longer be constrained by the PH plus one rule. Our current seasonal campaign guidelines will reign in effect for the duration of the Plague of Ancients storyline. These new guidelines aim to balance player agency over the character rules. Uh, sorry, these new guidelines aim to balance player agency over their characters' rule options with rules that are intuitive and easy for the DMs and players to communicate. Why these changes? We're lis we've listened to the feedback over 12 seasons, I guess, from the community and consulted with the D&D studio. Originally, the PH plus one rule was established to maintain character balance since new rules options were only being play tested with the assumption a player possessed a player's handbook, which is true. However, as we've seen, most players use rules unfettered by these constraints. Yeah, obviously. Most players will use whatever rules you can give them access to. As a result, we've broken our rules options down into a few categories, big rules expansions, specific world rules options, and some assorted digital-only supplements that have been released over the years, which is important. We'll talk about that. Our big rules expansions that are meant as player-facing options for broad use across all sorts of different D&D campaigns are now open for you to pull, uh, pull what you want to give you a much wider array of choice. Other options are more specifically linked to certain campaigns as their source material information uh, informs their use. Because of these impacts, these changes have on existing masters and historic characters. Effective today, players may rebuild their characters using all options made available to them in those campaigns. The seasonal campaign will update to this new system when the new storyline begins later in the year. We look forward to seeing how these updates influence the characters our community creates and the stories they will tell with hopes that these rules are easier to access and understand. So here's sort of the breakdown. Player option overview. A reminder, player options are rules, usually races, classes, subclasses, feats, spells, and backgrounds that are specifically positioned as player facing option in a given product. Material that is clearly a part of the Dungeon Master's purview is not allowed. Our community will be able to choose from player options in the following resources in any campaign. Player's Handbook, Volo's Guide to Monsters, Xanathar's Guide to Everything, Morgan Canaan's Tome of Foes, and Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. For campaigns set in the Forgotten Realms, seasonal starting next season, Masters Historic, the following will also be legal. The Sword Coast Adventures Guide. Again, that's very specific stuff. We are not talking, I don't think, we're talking, I guess, Feral Tiefling, Ghostwise Halfling, and the couple of, like, Arcana Cleric, really, as far as things that are actually kind of viable. There's a couple others, but most of the good stuff from there was reprinted. Um, for each seasonal campaign, the following will also be legal. Player options published in the associated hardcover adventure, so if your whatever adventure you have gives you options, for example, like Icewind Dale has some new spells in it, for example, that would be an option for you. For the Masters and Historic campaigns, the following will also be legal. Janazi and Arakokra from the Elemental Evil Players Companion, Tortles from the Tortle Package, and Lokatha from Lokatha Rising. So again, it, which is still kind of a huge bummer because so much got reprinted in Explorer's Guide to Wildmount, uh, but since... 
Avengers League is only, with the exception of what we'll talk about in a second, Forgotten Realms. It doesn't matter that so much stuff got reprinted in Explorer's Guide to Wild Mount. It doesn't help you with the original PH plus one rule. So uh, for Masters and Historic campaigns, you'll be able to play as either Janazi or Arakokra, Tortles or Lokatha. That means they're not allowing you to play as Grung. And I think... I think everything else got reprinted. I can't remember if uh, Sferf Neblin got where they were. I thought maybe they were in Elemental Evil Player's Companion, or maybe they were in Volos, but Deep Gnomes. Um, but yeah, so definitely Grung is out for sure, and obviously the other downside is you can't play any race that's not set in the Forgotten Realms, meaning nothing from... No, no Seder, no... Um, no Leonin, no uh, Centaur, Minotaur, you know, and then the other Valdalkin, Simic Hybrid. None of those are accessible to you. None of the new races that were included in Wild Mount. And then it says for, for the alternative campaign, Oracle of War, the following will also be legal. Player options published in the associated setting product, Eberron Rising from the Last War. So if you wanted to play a Warforged or a Changeling or something like that, they or only available in that. So this is a pretty interesting change. Again, this was always something that I saw a lot of people complain about. Um, I guess it's good for Adventure League, folks. I, I'll i be honest, I have, I have experience with the Adventures League, sure, but the only time I ever played at any Adventure League content was at conventions, because nine times out of 10, that was the only game that there was usually spots in. It was the only way you could guarantee you were going to get a chance to play and that it wouldn't have some like weird, you know, funky rule set that you'd need to brush up on. The rules were posted everywhere. So my first experience in Adventure League play was at a convention. And then the cool concept that I always liked about Adventure League was if I played my character at Adventure League, if I played by AO rules at home or at another place and then went back to another convention, I could keep that character and keep doing that. And I really enjoyed that. Um... And it was like a fun thing where I could get like my friends uh, at a convention. We'd all get together and do like the big adventures or the epics or something like that. Some big fun thing where we all could not have to be the DM, right? That was always the fun part about this. But the rules have had so many ups and downs. It's been crazy, especially like the past three or four seasons have been all over the place. And then now they got rid of Player's Handbook Plus One. Um, there's also, I keep forgetting that there's this, um, like, the online play weekends where you can, like, sign up to play D&D online. Virtual play weekend, that's what they're called. The next one is March 12th to 14th, and that uses AL rules. So that is an option for you, but I don't know. I'm kind of at the point in my life where there isn't really, there aren't conventions that I can go to. I actually did get to play in March, February at... Uh, I think at PAX East. I know I'd played it unplugged, but I think I got to play at PAX East right before everything went down and went crazy. So over a year ago at this point. But considering conventions, I don't really know the status of what they're going to be like. That's the only time I play Adventures League. This news isn't huge for me, but I also know for some folks, Adventure League was their only way to play. They could show up, they had rules, and it was an option for them to play every campaign, which was also nice because you'd get to play all of the pre-written campaigns and you always had a group, right? That was a fun thing, which I know a lot of people are like, oh, I don't care about Adventures League, but I I can't stress this enough, folks. For some people, this is their only means of playing D&D. But that would lead to all sorts of quite crazy like backdoor or like, how can I get this? Or this thing lets me play this race or I could use this to play as an Aarakocra or... I did this DM reward, so now I can make a Death Cleric from the Dungeon Master's Guide, which is garbage. I don't know why you'd want to do it, but you could. Um, anyway, I'm starting to ramble now at this point. But interesting big news for Adventure League fans, the removal of PH plus one. So now you can go crazy for the most part, right? You could be a, a different varying version of a Tiefling from uh, Morden Canaan's, or you could be a race from Volo's Guide with a subclass from Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. You'll also have access to all of those spells now. That was one that a lot of people would would kind of would bum people out. Like if I wanted to have access to all of the cantrips from Sword Coast Adventures Guide, that would have to be my plus one. Because until Tasha's Cauldron was printed, the Green Flame Blade Booming Blade, they only existed in the Sword Coast Adventures Guide. Now with the reprint of Tasha's, 
those were an option for you, but considering now everything's open, you can use any of the spells from Xanathar's or from Tasha's Cauldron, so you don't have to be limited in what extra spells you have. If you're playing a different race and you want to use the feats from Xanathar's Guide, the racial feats, or the feats from Tasha's Cauldron, it's not like I have to choose this book as my plus one for the feats it grants me, but then not have access to the Xanathar's Guide to Everything spell, li spell list. So good to see this. I'm excited for the Adventure League, folks. Maybe I'll get a chance to get back into it when the world turns back to normal, but we all know that's not happening anytime soon. So thank you all so much for watching. I'll have a link to it in the description too if you want to check the article out for yourself. And I'll see you next time.